Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's What Women Be. We're back. Amanda. I said we're here. We're back. And we have a guest today, guys. I'm excited. I know. I'm so excited. This is my good friend, you guys. I want you to welcome David Lasher. Hi, Hi Dee. Hi. How are you? How are you? Good. We have so much to talk about. Well, first of all, your podcast, which I was a guest on a few weeks ago, which was so fun. Um, can I just say, thank you. That w- your co-host, I'm madly in love with her. Like, she's my female crush. <laughs> I always wanted to be her as a child. I think she was probably the first person that I ever saw on TV. And I was like, oh my God, she's so beautiful. <laughs> she's so beautiful. I want to be just like Melody. But she's so cool. <laughs> She is she is as cool as she seems and genuine and uh, and smart. She's an amazing partner. And I'm so glad that we came back together to do this show. Um, And you were amazing, Melissa. What a great interview. I mean, so many amazing stories. And you and I have I can't even believe how much, you know, history and projects we've done together. It's really it's wild. Right. I mean, we we touched it. We touched on it on yours. So, well, let's tell everybody it's uh. It's called uh, Hey Dude, the 90s Called, right? Is that the official <laughs> <Yep>. full title? <laughs> and Yes. A look back at the, the decade of the 90s. Yeah, it's so fun. And you guys, you've had so many wonderful reunions on there. And it's you and Christine Taylor. We didn't mention her name. We just said oh, how I beautiful just call her and by her amazing her <laughs> <shows>. <laughs> on Hey Dude. <laughs> but yeah, so um, you guys have had, and you guys have had like all of our buddies. on. So I listened to the one with Elisa. Did you, um, you had, uh, who did you just, did you just do one with Jason Priestley? Yeah, Jason, that episode dropped yesterday and he was amazing. Joey Lawrence, you know. Joey, of course. We spoke about you very kindly. He, you know, uh, <laughs> he was, he was great, man. He, Joey's super smart. Like, and I was saying to Christine, he, he plays these characters that are like, I don't want to say, naive or whatever you know but he's he's really a super smart really well spoken guy yeah well you guys have done almost as many shows together as you and i have like right because you guys did blossom together and then you did Ye- melissa and joey yeah we, we did blossom for i did three seasons with him and uh you know we were both younger and we went back into some of the craziness of that time um but yeah, we we had uh, you know Adam Duritz from the Counting Crows. I was really oh, yeah. excited about yeah. him, and um, and and Ben Stiller and uh, Jeff Bridges and the White Squall cast. So it's been yeah we've we've it's been like we've been very lucky with our guests, and uh, and that's the best part of it is like either meeting or reconnecting with really interesting people doing amazing things. You know that you have all these connections with. It's it's incredible. It's such a it's such a cool thing to do to look back. Like, I love that about our podcast, too. Like, catching up with people like you and, like, rehashing memories and telling stories that maybe we haven't told before. Because being on your podcast, we were able to talk about a movie that very few people know about. What is this? Called Twisted Desire. Oh, we had a minute of this. We did. People talk about it. But it's it <laughs> is, it's is—it's a movie that everybody—I don't even know where you find it. But, um, David, what's, what's your memory of being on the set of Twisted Desire? I have amazing memories from that. We were in where North Carolina or uh, South where Charleston. Char- Charleston, yeah. South Carolina, right? I think because it's the first time I had shrimp and grits. I think, right? Uh, or were that's we, a life changing moment for anybody. So yeah, that would make it sense. Good. It was Charleston, yeah. And I had just started dating my wife, and she came down, and uh, I, I remember going out to see music with her, and just like loving the city, and uh, and working with you, and it was a really great cast. It was, it was a really well done, well done movie. It was Daniel Baldwin played my dad, and his real life wife at the time played my mom, and uh, and she and I looked a lot alike actually. I think, and then um, Jeremy, and then Jordan, you killed him. Yeah. So David turns <laughs> well, me didn't down. You actually, David, no, David turns me down because my dad's so crazy. I can't oh, date you while okay. this guy's like being crazy. So then I go date another guy played by Jeremy Jordan. If you remember the beginning of 90210 yes. when Tori Spelling puts on the jukebox and goes, Jeremy Jordan, all right. That was, he was like a rap star, <laughs> like a white rap, like an early Eminem or something. <laughs> and uh, and so Jeremy Jordan, I convince him that I'm madly in love with him and he should kill my parents so we can be together. He kills him, he goes to jail so I can get David back. <laughs> That's the twisted desire. By the way, it's on YouTube. Oh, there Anybody you go. Besides People they need can watch to see it. this. Yeah. People love that stuff, that like, you know, true crime genre, you know, 
I think it would do well today. I love that your memory of it is like wooing your wife. It's so sweet. And mine is like shrimp and grits. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's also that, you know, that they didn't, um, I don't I don't know if the laws have changed in South Carolina, but I remember, I don't, I think I was underage, so I couldn't really drink, but I remember at the bar, they would only give you airplane bottles. They could only serve you in airplane bottles. They weren't allowed to serve giant bottles of alcohol. <laughs> it was, it had to be, they kept opening little bottles and pouring it in the drinks. And I was fascinated oh by that. Like, See, that's those little happen. alcoholic bottles. <laughs> Yeah. So if that movie came out, what, like 1996, how old were you? Oh my gosh, it was in 96. So I had graduated high school in 94, so I was 20. Oh, so it must have been right before Sabrina. I think it was probably in the same year that we shot the Sabrina movie or maybe right after. No, it must have been before the Sabrina movie because between the Sabrina movie and the show getting picked up, I don't think I did any work. So it must have been right before Sabrina became a thing. And we met in South Carolina and then what it was like, Six years later, you were on Sabrina? I think I started Sabrina in 99. Oh, okay. So three years later. And how did you, did you yeah. audition? Did you meet with my mom? How did you get the part on Sabrina? I can't remember. Oh, yeah. I mean, I had to go to ABC, to that little theater, you know, oh, the yeah. network uh, test. And, but I, it was, you know, when you go in there and there's a friendly face like your mom, <laughs> who you know is rooting for you, it's so much so much more pleasant. It gives a little, yeah. And I knew you guys were friends. And <laughs> uh, and yeah, it was I mean, it was a great what an amazing time we had on Sabrina. We did. So yeah, because we you you came in as Josh and I guess then that was like the third season. And uh yeah, well, I guess we started the show of Sabrina in 96. So if the sh movie aired in 90, well, we probably shot it in 95 and it aired in 96. And then Sabrina started in 96 in the fall of 96. And you were doing Clueless at the time, right? Did you? Right, right, right. We're on the Paramount lot, right? Yeah. Right next to you guys. And you, who did you play on Clueless? I played uh, the Paul Rudd role, uh, the older brother. Oh, okay. Um, was it was it incestuous and... in this one too? I forget in the series. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it was a little bit. I mean, I feel like I had almost gotten the movie because I, I don't know what happened. I, but but when Amy Heckerling decided the following year after the movie to make it a series, they just offered me the role. Um, and it was fun. He's Donald Faison was on and mm. Elisa and Stacey Dash and uh, most of the cast, except for Alicia. Mm. And uh, was Brecken and, and in the series as well Brecken Meyer no 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 but you guys yeah you guys had a good time you were there for what a season or two and then you came over to us yeah I think as soon as I it was very quick when 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 I was done with Clueless I got Sabrina very quickly and I just stayed on the Paramount lot so it was like you kept your pass it was seamless yeah did you keep your parking spot too <laughs> I think it, it it was not the same trailer, but very close. Did you did you park in the tank? Were you in the tank? Uh, yeah, every day. I remember. Yeah. Uh, the tank's so special. Oh my gosh! You, what is the tank? You remember? <laughs> you want to explain that, David? Uh, well, it's like a giant, uh, like ocean uh, mural that they shoot. As, as ocean scenes, right? Water so scenes. You shoot yeah, the, against like it. Truman Show when he's floating in the boat and he gets oh, to the yeah, wall. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. But and yeah, it's, it's a parking lot. <laughs> would they use it as a parking lot when it's not full of water? But So whenever they would right. have to shoot a movie, like when Truman Show was shooting, we'd have to park outside. And at night, they'd come in and shoot Truman Show. And it was just, they fill the tank with water and they have this huge psych in the back that just is clouds and makes it look like a natural skyline. And they shoot any scene of a movie or TV show. We used it for things like the volcano when... Sabrina has to throw her evil twin in the volcano. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's been, I think it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, so it was really special to park in the tank. We'd like park in this big blue tank of water, and but no water in it. Drained pool, basically. And walk this staircase up and out of the tank. Oh, like the one in the Truman Show with like the door? Yeah. There, well, sort of like that. Real? Yeah, yeah. I'm learning new things. Yeah. Look at me. <laughs> so, David, tell us, uh, let's talk a little, well, we got to get to, like, what you binge and stuff, because that's what we're doing here, really. But we want to hear about your experience on Sabrina. I mean, Sabrina was, like, uh, a family experience, you know? Right? I, we, we talked about it uh, the other day with you, but, uh, you know, your mom and you really created a, an environment where 
everybody was close. Everybody was welcome at your home, at your mom's home. You know, I just remember I the love game nights. That. Yeah. You told that story on your podcast, and I love that. I forgot that my mom had so many parties at her house. Oh, so you get I'm it. I'm telling you, I had friends who showed up to your mom's game nights when I wasn't even there. <laughs> you know, I, I I have friends that would, would roll in and out of her house, and and you had all those like girl parties and spa days, and I did keep just, it pretty girl it. heavy. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I had a lot of parties with the guys, too, but <laughs> she does that now, too. I still I love throw, I think if I wasn't an actor, I'd be a party planner because I love entertaining. I have a question, though, about Josh is coming to Sabrina when you already had kind of an established love interest with Harvey and all of that. Well, we had to stir it up. It had been like two seasons of Sabrina and Harvey and just like Ross and Rachel or it, I'm not even comparing us to Ross and Rachel. But, <laughs> we you know, were on a break. Yeah, we were on a break. Like you <laughs> have to you have to stir it up. You have to bring in new blood. You got to make new storylines. You got to create conflict and drama. Right. So Josh came in and he was like the college. You were like the college kid at the coffee bar. Right. Like kind of more mature, right. had a job. I was your boss, right? I think you, yeah, that's right. You were my boss. Oh. Really inappropriate relationship. Yeah, yeah. That's what the '90s was about. <laughs> I, I, I'd get sued and canceled today for for, for sure. suing my employee for sure. <laughs> um, but it was, I mean, it was it was fun to play off you too in a way that it was like the more mature side of Sabrina, right? So I got to be like David's character was just so put together and mature, had his stuff together, obviously the better choice for Sabrina, for anyone, um, than Harvey, who was sort of like the non-skater, skater kid at no school. No like, what's up? No, we love <laughs> Nate. And everyone loves Harvey. We know this. But, you know, it was it, like, if you're thinking about it as like a mom, who do you want your daughter to date? Like the guy with a job who's got his crap together? or it's like the, the German Shepherd or the, <laughs> or the, <laughs> the Golden Retriever. <laughs> Wait, wait, which one am I? I think you're, you're the, the German, German shepherd. shepherd. You have a job. Um, you're you're, you're well-trained. You know what you're doing in life. <laughs> well-trained. Okay. I feel like a golden retriever, though. <laughs> well, in, you, in, in real heart. life, maybe you are. In real life, retriever. he is. I don't know you retriever. well enough to say. Well, so you much. don't age, for sh for one. And I love seeing your beautiful family all over. Like, I love, I love your wife, Jilly. We love Jilly. And she and, loves you, too. She said to send her love. And her brother. I think I follow her brother on Instagram. But then your daughter is the big TikTok star Yes. Now. Okay, so I had never put these two together. I just told Amanda about this I, a little bit ago. Jax and Chelsea, are. I love following them. They're so fun. So yeah, I had no idea that Jax was, was our was our babysitter. Um, and then, and then uh, during uh, the COVID lockdown, I knew she was a songwriter, but, you know, she Every uh, you know, I didn't think much of it. She was just a sweet girl that, that Chelsea loved when she babysat, and they actually started doing TikToks together. Chelsea made her download TikTok, and they'd spend the night doing TikToks and cook baking stuff, and they just had fun together. And then all of a sudden, Jax is on the Ellen DeGeneres talk show, <laughs> um, and Jill and I are like, "What is going on here?" And Jax started writing these little like jingles on TikTok. And uh, and then did one with Chelsea about being her babysitter and like the trouble they would get in trying to, you know, hide stuff before we got home. <laughs> and like the first one they did, I'm not kidding, had like 125 million views. Oh, my gosh. And they just started like this uh, storyline together. And they they've done, you know, TikToks like every few months, they'll do one together. Uh, Jax, of course, released an album and had two top 10 hits uh which i over love last oh, summer. by the way i'm sure i've yeah, come in singing them to you kid. all the time oh i don't know i'll have to check it out i only listen to 90s victoria's rock secret. So. yeah i actually in the dressing room before this i was singing victoria's secret to her <laughs> <laughs> she was wait so it's a uh, it's a great message for for girls too I, I just need to know did uh did you guys know about the stuff she sang about when she was like why mom gets mad at my babysitter kind of stuff. Did you guys, were you aware of the trouble they had gotten into together or was this news to you I, when you listened to the TikTok? <laughs> I, it, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's c content creation. So it's, I, you know, it's I, fiction. Hopefully they, they Historical. did. She let her stay up late. She never ate dinner. She'd start with dessert, like stuff like that, yeah. you know, like, but then it got to, you know, your boyfriend snuck in and, <laughs> I actually did one with them uh, a few months ago. Oh, I saw that. Uh, 
you know, Jax will call me. She's just constantly taking care of Chelsea, and she's an amazing uh, role model for Chelsea. Yeah. She's a self-starting girl, hardworking songwriter. I mean, she was on uh, American Idol, I don't know how many years oh, ago. Oh, really? Came in like second or third. And oh, I didn't know that. Lab- labels wouldn't sign her. So she made herself on yeah. TikTok and got signed by Atlantic. Yeah. That's awesome. I'll have to check it out. Well, we have to get into what you binge, David. What do you what are you into? Whether it's TV, books, podcasts, movies, you know, uh, shoes, whatever. Well, Jill and I uh have been binging a lot of shows. And a book that I read that Jill gave me was called Daisy Jones yeah. and the Six. Oh yeah. Let's talk and about it. <laughs> we did a special episode I- about that a few weeks ago. <laughs> I know I, I, I'm going to say the same things probably your other guests say, but I, I, Daisy Jones, the book was so amazing to me because I'm a huge Stevie Nicks Fleetwood Mac mm-hmm. fan. So I really like imagined, I know it's loosely based on them, but like the, I just imagined the music scene in LA in the seventies and they were, you know, she and, and Billy were so flawed and, mm. it, it, and then the show I didn't want to like the show, you know. Mm. That first episode a is a little. Mm. I, yeah, I was like, I don't picture. I, I I didn't picture the wife as beautiful as she was, you know, mm. like. She's uh, stunning. I, she's, yeah, I, I in my head, you know, when you read a book, you have your own uh, visions of the characters. But the show completely won me over. And it was it was just amazing. How many episodes are there now? Do you, There's I nine, I believe. Okay. Nine or ten. Um they're all out now. You can binge That's the entire all thing. Yes, for the first Yeah, season, so it's, it's done. Not okay, out. I'm only like five or six episodes in. I got to get on that. I've been working on shrinking and trying to get into Poker Face and a few others, but there's just so much to watch. It's just insane. And then there's only certain things that Mark will watch with me, so I have to like well, the prioritize. Day, I've only gotten through the first three of Daisy Jones, and I am so excited to see the rest. Yeah. I, I just really hope, and you can, don't spoil it for me if you've already <laughs> finished it. But I just hope that they really develop Daisy's character beyond, like, because I I suspected by episode three that we would have really seen more of Daisy's life. Yeah, it's really been more of the six, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I'm still hopeful. Oh, yeah. It comes. And, okay, And good. I'll say this. The original music that they created was phenomenal. Okay, you're in. I, I've liked what I've heard so far. I love the theme song. I've said this before, but I love the theme song. I think it's really, it just, like... I want to hear the rest of that song because it just catches me. That's a Patti Smith song, right? Oh, is it? I think so. So it's not? A, no. It's not an original? Damn it. I think so. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but the but, original music is great. And then what do you think of Riley playing uh, Daisy? You know, I didn't even realize she was Elvis's granddaughter. Jill told me like when we were a yeah. few episodes in, but I'm they not surprised. Really... You'll see. Her voice is incredible. They didn't really, yeah, which I was shocked by. Is that really her singing? I think it is. Is yeah. it? Okay. Because she's she's noted as the singer on all the songs on the That's soundtrack. Great. But, I mean, yeah, I at first I'm, like, watching her really carefully, but, like, they really didn't promote it. Like, Elvis's granddaughter as Daisy, jo- you know, they didn't. Well, there was all that, right. I mean, with her mom passing and all of that, like, literally well, right before it came yeah, out. I'm right sure before. they may have planned some of that and decided. Maybe, that wasn't the maybe. Right but call. it's interesting that they didn't use Elvis to really, like, they didn't, they didn't, they used Reese. They, you know, yeah. But they didn't use other, uh, they maybe didn't use she's just Riley, really. Trying not to do the Nepo baby. And I love that. And I, yeah. I totally appreciate that. I just thought it was fascinating that, like, it actually it seems to be doing well. Without that, you know, I know it makes me happy yeah. and excited for her. But I did. I thought like you did, David. I thought she was her voice is incredible. But I also like as an actor, I'm watching her like, can she do it? Can she hack it? You know what? She you know, does she have you what that judgy takes? No other but, actors. Of course. Well, yes. Really? I mean, if there's Especially bad acting, another woman, you can't get past bad acting. Well, like, I'm sorry. No matter how good the show is. Don't you agree, David? What do you? Yeah, of course. Uh, that's uh, that could ruin a show, but d- they are they are fantastic. And she, uh, if if you're only a few episodes in, and when I was only a few episodes in, I I thought in the book she's she's a much bigger mess mm-hmm. than she is mm. in the show. But it it 
not to spoil it, but if it it comes and she goes okay. there and she's that's amazing. what I want to see because I felt like they've just kind of made her like this bohemian, you know, where she's just kind she's of got it, kind of got it together in her own world, but yeah. almost yeah, kind of almost has it together. But in the book, by that point, she's like already kind of made a name for herself. She's going to all these parties. She's kind of strung out, like. And you just really don't see that. Yeah. So I'm glad to know that that oh, comes. It comes. I guarantee you both cry at the last episode. Oh. Oh, I'm sure I will. Oh. All right. That's the I'm, book. I mean, challenge accepted. It's such a great <laughs> book. So I, I really have been hopeful that they would do it justice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what else? What do you guys? What do you and Jill like besides Daisy Jones? Like, what are the? Do you guys lean towards comedy or drama or crime or? Are we really anything that's. That's good. I mean, shrinking. We loved. I I know you mentioned it. Yeah. I thought that show. Like you can't really define it as comedy or drama because I was I was you know he he lost his wife. I mean it's like it's it's heavy but it's light and it's uh, yeah. I, I we love that show. Yeah, it reminds me of what's the uh, Ricky Gervais show that I liked so much? Light life something. Uh, the, it just reminds me that like it's it's it can be so funny and so entertaining and light and yeah like it's something I can go to bed watching like I don't need to I always have to have a, a palate cleanser before a I go to bed at night afterlife there's always like a palate cleanser Mark and I have to have if we watch something dark we have to watch yeah I have friends to watch something or, happy I yeah. can't watch but shrinking I don't have to do that you know it does go deep but on the surface and oh Ted McGinley I a think good that's the greatest show that I've been on TV in years when I see a friend of mine on a show like that too like Ted McGinley working with Harrison Ford, I'm like, I'm Harrison so Ford you're is so, so amazing. Funny. He's so good. I did not know Harrison Ford could be that funny. I mean, if you think about it, Han Solo is the funniest part of Star Wars. I mean, but he's, yes, but it, it's different. That's true. I don't know. I just didn't <laughs> right? expect Han Solo like, was always the When funny. Leia says, I love you, and he says, I know. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, as he's being lowered into the freezing thing. Yeah, Carbonite. He's, got, he's got so much... Like, he's the levity in Star Wars, and I think that that's what he does in this as well. But in such a— oh, and it's so funny. fun dip kills me every time. Oh, I love it. He's like, what is this? <laughs> he's like sticking yeah. his fingers Right, in. but his relationship with his daughter and what he's going through is— yeah. it's, it's dark. It's heavy. It yeah. is. Yeah. It's like dark comedy, if you will. Yes. But not really, but sort of. <laughs> it, it I don't want to spoil it. It amazes me when, when the writers can, can balance that, right? Yeah. When, yes. When— it could it could make a comedy with some very serious moments. Uh, it's very hard to do. I mean, you know, people like to label: is this a funny comedy mm -hmm. or is this uh, a drama? And, well, they want to be able one... to categorize it for the awards. <laughs> well, it's just it's just real <laughs> life wrapped up in a That's TV thing. bubble, and it's like, made by the same people as Ted. I know that for since Ted Lasso came out, the success of Ted Lasso, I feel like everyone's been trying to duplicate that. No one's been able to until now. I feel like Shrinking is the closest. Well, it's we the come. same creator. It's the same creator. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. He took that same kind of recipe. And by the way, speaking of Ted Lasso, have you watched that, David? I watched the first season, um, and I, I loved it because of the character's optimism. You know, he yes. was just like, and and at the time, right, it, it came out during COVID, COVID right, yeah. during lockdown. And I yeah. feel like everyone, I mean, look, the show's great, but did it deserve the most Emmys of any show in history? I don't know. It's a, it was a great show, but I think I think people needed it at the time. Really yeah, needed that sure. character. And I'll tell you, the new season is just it's as spectacular. So like, good. The way that they oh, handle, really? yeah, you got to watch it because second season is kind of yeah. Second season gets a little strange. There's some strange, things that you're like, I don't understand. It's because it gets darker because Ted Lasso does lose a little of his optimist, optimism and kind of has to come back from that, but. The third one starts off so oh, amazing it's because so good. it just they they do this thing where they I've never seen it in television. They build conflict and then they quickly diffuse it immediately in the appropriate way. Like instead of doing like the, you know, the usual thing you would do for an episode of television, which is like hide something until the end and then go, "Oh, I should have just told you the truth from the beginning" because then we don't have a story, right? A lot of the time it's like if you would just like I always say in Frozen, <laughs> the movie Frozen, I always go back to this. If the trolls had just told them like, she's got these powers, tell everyone and let her learn how to use them. That would have been great. But the trolls didn't. The trolls said, hide it, hide it, and sub like, subdue Try it. Try and control. If they hadn't done that, you won't have the Fear movie of Frozen. Fear will be your greatest enemy. Yeah. Yeah. So then Why you have- so cryptic, old man? Yeah. Just, just tell <laughs> them that like they- It's like in should... The Wizard of Oz. Glenda sees Dorothy at the beginning. She could have just told her, click your heels and mm -hmm. you're happier. Mm-hmm. 
But in Ted Lasso, they have somehow, to learn their lessons. Well, that's what they don't do in Ted Lasso. It's like someone says something wrong and they go, I'm sorry, you can't say that. That's rude. And they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said that. And you're like, well, that's the grown up way to handle things. But it, it's entertaining. It's so weird. That they can get away with it. I'm glad show. there's examples for grownups out there on I how know. to handle we conflict. Need, we need it. Yeah, David, I definitely recommend you and Jill check that out. Check out third season. Even if you skip second I season. Can. Yeah, completely skip the second. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. I can't wait. Yeah. I, I'll I'll show. I, we're, we're watching Fauda right now. But l- like you said, we watch at, you know, at night before bed and it's heavy and, and it's uh, violent and there's subtitles. So you got to like. Be on your game. You, I don't you know can't that. be on your phone. Wait, tell me about that. What is that show? Fauda? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I think it's like season four or five. I've uh, heard of this. I have it, no idea. It's about special operations like Mossad agents in Israel. I don't know this that either. are you've never heard of Fauda? No. You have oh, to tell wow. us if this yeah, is something we need to be watching. Tell us, tell us. Oh my God. I mean, the lead character, Daron, is like Bruce Willis in Die Hard. I mean, he's he's the Israeli like superhero wow. who you know is, is he's estranged from his wife and he's got nothing to lose and uh, and it's just really well done. Um, the storylines and you know it goes into the Israeli conflict with terrorism and what what these uh, special ops do. They go in to the other territories uh, undercover and uh, yeah, I, I recommend it, but it's, it's, you it might like- need to, you might need to slow down before bed after this one though. Oh yeah. This so, sounds like stuff the brain listen or watches without me. Yeah. See, Amanda is very sensitive to stuff. She can't watch, like she can't watch Bambi, you know? So like we have to <laughs> that like sounds really terrible, but Bambi is very the- traumatic. It's actually not because you don't see anything. You just hear a gunshot. That's it. You don't see anything. Nemo, the mom and all the baby eggs die. Like, I mean, that's brutal. This is you the see circle the bar- of life. You, Bambi Barracuda. is like. Bambi's not dramatic. upsetting. Dumbo. Now that's also upsetting. upsetting. But <laughs> we'll get into that another day. But <laughs> Old Yeller. Oh. Who oh. cried? Did you know there's a website, though, called Did the Dog Die? Yes. Someone told me this and I was going to tell you about it. And it is like a resource and it's not just about the dog there's like all sorts of things you can know but did through. the dog die means like you find out if the movie's acceptable to you right if it's like gonna upset you in a certain way if it's gonna yes. trigger you in and some there's, way there's a whole list of things on there that you can look specifically for like is this in this movie and, yeah so resource did you ever see a dog's a dog's purpose yes no I refuse because I know what's oh gonna happen God. and I'm gonna cry through the whole wait thing. that's the one where the dog keeps getting reincarnated right Yes, it's but so good. But the it's so first, obscure. yeah, the first life of the dog. He's the the dog of this this kid who's probably eight years old, and they're best friends. And he, he says this thing to him. Uh, I forget what it was, but the kid goes off to college, and they have to call him home to say goodbye to the dog. Mm. And I, I was bawling. <sighs> you know, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. handle that. that yeah, that first it is that first death, but then the dog keeps. I know, but it keeps getting reincarnated. You, that means so you have to beautiful. watch the dog die over and over and over again. Yeah, but sometimes like, it's quick. No, it's emotional sometimes torture is what that is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's trying to find his way back to that boy. To that who, one and, boy. Well, I don't want to spoil it, but it, it, <laughs> it's the boy's all grown up. <laughs> he's That's, all Dennis Quaid. It's really cute. I think he would actually like it. Dennis it's a little Quaid. old yeller, right? Isn't it like along the vein of like the sadness of old yeller, but like it keeps making it, but it gets happier. Like it gets happier as it goes on. It's like old yeller happens in the beginning of Dog's Purpose and then it gets happier, right? Am I right, David? Am I remembering this correctly? It's got so, a spiritual vibe to it, you know? I mean, the reincarnation of the dog and how he keeps saving people and yeah, as, as, as the dog has many different lives, but he's got a purpose in each life, and and the final purpose is to find his original. Yeah, owner. That's it's a right. beautiful yeah. movie, but yeah, it is, and it's a really nicely well, filmed, well acted. Good I'm coming to you effects. both for therapy. After okay, I that's fine. I'll, I'll counsel you. I'll be there for you. I'll be there for you. You watch it though. You watch it for me. <laughs> what about like... Tulsa, Tulsa King? Have you guys seen that? No, not What's yet. What's this about? It, it's Sylvester Stallone, right. who. Uh, plays um like a capo in a in a mafia family i have seen this trailer who, uh, yes it's it's beyond what you would expect and so good jill and i and jill's not like uh she doesn't like uh gangster stuff mm-hmm. 
it's so amazing. And Stallone is incredible. Is it like adventure action e or is it more like drama? No, like he was betrayed. He he took the fall for the boss of the family who's older and, and his, his two sons who were kids when he went to, he's been, he was been in jail for 25 years. Oh. And this is all in the, in the, uh, in the opening episode. So I'm not spoiling anything, but he basically sacrificed his life for this family and they send him off to Tulsa, uh, as you know, like a consolation, like go ahead and there's a racetrack there. Maybe you can wow. make a living there. And it's a gangster walking into the town of Tulsa at, and and he's just chaos and suits. Like, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Wow, very cool. All right, Add I'm gonna check that list. one out. I yeah. also have to watch King Mayor of Kingstown. I haven't seen that one yet, and I feel like I would like that. And then uh, the new se- the final season of Succession just started. Oh, that's right. I got to watch the first season. Oh yeah. Do you watch that? What? I know. You never watch Succession. I did a little bit. Here's the problem: when Mark doesn't like something, I can't go on with it. Like I'm, st- I still haven't finished like the last two episodes of Handmaid's Tale because I just haven't had time to myself. And I'm going away for three weeks, and I'm making a list of all the things I can't watch with Mark. So I'm going to be finishing Daisy Jones, Outlander. I just started Outlander. I've watched a few episodes, but there's like twenty nine thousand seasons of that. So yeah, you got you got some catching, and they're long and in depth, and you have to pay attention. But um, yeah, I've got some. I've got a long list of whenever I'm away from my family, that's when I catch up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're if you're gonna start Succession from episode one, that's you know, it's, it's a long be, way to go. I, know, I 30, love to 40 hate hours. It. Logan, he started it last night. We watched or night before the first episode of the season, and he was like, "You gonna sit in here and watch it with me?" And I was like, "Well, you can start it. I'll probably go and do whatever." And of course, I sat through the whole thing. It is just one of those. They're all garbage humans, Wait, it, and I isn't can't. Isn't Logan the lead character? Well, Who's Logan Logan? is, but he's all the brain. Her My hus- husband is. Her Logan. husband is Logan. <laughs> oh, he's, he's also the the, the, the main character. Of, yes, of the show. Yeah. Very confusing. Yes. Well, should we get? We have a few questions we want to ask you that we ask all our guests. Um, I mean, each season. This is season five questions. You're you're. Are we still in season five? I think we're in season. Technically, six. Technically, we're in season six, but we're we haven't had enough season five questions. guests, so we're going to do season five questions. All right. You've been doing this show for six seasons? 60 something episodes. Yeah. 65, 70. How many? That's incredible. A year's worth. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you'll be there next year. You'll be there. (laughs) Yeah. We do 10 episodes. It's amazing. So we're. Yeah. I love my bra. I know you do. I really love this bra. You're like madly in love with your bra. I've never loved a bra. Who makes your bra, bra. Amanda? Skims makes this bra. Skims. I love Skims. I am kind of new to the Skims thing. There was a lot of hype. And I was like, all right, I let know. me try it out. But I have to say, it is, it's game-changing. It's the Fits Everybody collection. And I'm telling you, it really does fit everyone. I, the last time I bought string bikini underpants was like way pre-babies. But I'm telling you, any style of underwear you want to wear, they offer it. And it's buttery soft. It's going to fit your body. It's not going to be like cutting into you. It's stretchy, right? It's, it's stretchy not and soft up. and just melts into your body. It's so good and the bras y'all go buy yeah, the bras the girls are looking perky they're i'm literally defying gravity <laughs> skims is a solution oriented brand creating the next generation of underwear loungewear and shapewear for everybody everybody and believe the hype when we tell you this collection has over 90,000 five star reviews and it's for a reason. Yeah, the Fits Everybody collection of underwear are lightweight, form-fitting essentials. The buttery soft fabric molds your body, stretches to twice its size. It's really incredible. From sizes extra, extra small, all the way up to 4X, and they're offered in nine different colorways, so you're guaranteed to be able to match your skin tone or get any of the limited edition seasonal colors that you want. They also just don't, they don't just have underwear and bras. They also offer dresses and t-shirts and bodysuits. Everything to make you feel buttery soft all the time. Yes, Skims fits everybody, and more best-selling essentials are available right now at skims.com. Plus, you get free shipping on orders over $75, and it's all at skims.com right now. That's S K I M S dot com. And thank you, Skims, for sponsoring our podcast. So, all right, David, is there a reboot that you liked better than the original? Reboot. TV reboot? TV, movie, play? I don't think so. Um, I I will say I I was a big fan of the American Office, the Office. Mm. 
and I found it when I after I watched the American version, I went back to watch the Ricky Gervais version, and I found it hard. I don't know. I wouldn't say the American version's better. I found it hard to like just reintroduce myself to these characters in in in, in a British version of it. In a British, so I, I did. I, I I didn't keep going with it. But Do they feel too snobby with their accents. <laughs> <laughs> I just was so in love with the uh, the office characters yeah. that it's hard to, I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of, of reboots. Yeah. So I guess that means we're not going back to Hey Dude, huh? Uh, are you? Oh, uh, <laughs> hey, hey Dude, uh, no, but. It's a shame. I don't know. My MB, Mbialik might have something in the works. <gasps> Uh-oh. That's. <laughs> as long as there's the weird hole in the middle of the desert that everyone seems to fall into, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, Melissa, let's pitch it. Let's do like um, Clarissa goes to the ranch. <gasps> uh, I do have a call with Nickelodeon, she, guys. Week, so I'll pitch that. <laughs> yeah, Clarissa marries Ted. They buy the ranch and uh, we could have Chelsea star in it. <laughs> there you go. Stop it. You, Please so do this. Amanda was a fan, so did, was there uh, anything you wanted to ask before I go further? I, I would prefer not to embarrass myself today. Am I turning pink? No, don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> okay, we'll leave. She's it been that. wanting to have you on for the entire time <laughs> that we've been doing this. No, like, that was probably one of the first shows that I remember like loving as a kid and Amanda's looking forward to coming on TV me, all the time. Was Hey yeah. Dude, and yeah. It just Amanda's yeah, in the mid. If you were the right age, like, if, Melissa, we talked about this. I mean, there, there, are, there are people that were the right age at that time. Yes, and for some reason, you know, Hey Dude and Clarissa, those shows meant a lot to them. That's exactly right. You know, it was that yeah. early '90s Nickelodeon. Yeah. The nostalgia, thing. the nostalgia aspect is like insane. Like how, um, I mean just how things are resurging like the 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 huge amount behind clueless right now right i was just at 90s con a few weeks ago and like the the amount of people that were there to see the clueless cast or the charmed cast or you know we have to think there before you guys there really wasn't a whole lot of live action television for children right so it, yeah that's true and there wasn't accessibility to no, that's people true too. either so i think be able, being able to see kids on TV and it's not like Barney or Sesame Street or something like that. It felt kind of grown up and a little edgy. That's true. And yeah. it was exciting to watch and it was very relatable. Yeah. And you guys oh, didn't point. have the distractions of texting and social media and right, uh, yeah. Wanting short you know, little TikTok. clippets of things. Yeah. Right. I, I can't tell you a show that my youngest loves i mean she watches uh, outer banks uh -huh. but she's even just like okay i'm bored with that and she's on youtube and tiktok that's all day my 10 year old is on youtube all day watching short little clips of people do stupid stuff and we finally turned right. on after 90s con i was actually like you know what you're gonna watch all that you're gonna watch all that <laughs> that's a great Sit down here we go so in the morning my husband puts on looney tunes for him and in the afternoon it's all that <laughs> that should be the other guests in the ranch by the way when should we get kel mitchell what i think it needs to be all the cast of all that Oh yeah, with you on the ranch. Why don't we get Danny yeah, Tamborelli, Kel Mitchell, all the Nickelodeon? Better if we if should it just do that. Out Let's just get the Nickelodeon. Can we do a reality show? <laughs> Let's just do a reality show of Nickelodeon so '90s stars. Big Orange House. Right, all the Nickelodeon '90s stars, and come <laughs> up with some, you know, version of a like a, a combination of Keenan and Kel meets Clarissa meets the Hey Dude gang. Yeah, so. yeah. Or guys, hear me out. A Christmas movie. <laughs> oh, we should do one, David. Let's I'm do a Christmas show. Someone, Are you talking about a Nickelodeon? Who, who, I'm saying all these people. I mean, it's like the ultimate, like thirty-five-year-old uh, woman's actually, dream. There is something I, <laughs> I have a little meeting next week about something in that vein that we'll talk about later. But, oh, I love cryptic. Um, talks. I will. Yes, I will tell you guys about <laughs> something in. Yeah. Just, I, there's some talks going on about a script I read that's very 90s a, a, nostalgia. A, a very a snick Christmas. Chris, a Chris, very snick Christmas. <laughs> um, I can't, let's see. We That'd can be funny. Play oh, wait, with this. I have to keep going Melissa's with my questions. This is the master of Christmas movies. I, I, I try. Um, is there a cover of a song that you think is blasphemy? I wouldn't say blasphemy, but I, I, uh, I'm a huge Stevie Nicks fan, as I said, and I think the song Landslide mm. is one of the most perfect, mm. beautiful songs 
specific to her. And I, we, I actually saw her perform it in um, Laguna at the Ohana oh. Festival, Eddie Vedder's festival a few months ago. And listening to her sing that song in her mid seventies, you know, when she says, uh, children get older and I'm getting older too. It just, it was even more powerful to me. And, and who has the, Smashing pumpkins. Smashing pumpkins. You don't like their version? As like, I don't I kinda, like their version. I kind of love it. Like, why? <laughs> I, I love the Smashing Pumpkins, but that song to me is perfection yeah. and it's Stevie Nicks story. So why would anyone else touch it? Yeah. I do like the Dixie Chicks version. Oh, I don't know their It's version. still not the same as the original, but it's good. I think I love that song, however it is. I love it all different ways. Oh, like I'm in a mood. You for love the Smashing different. Pumpkins. I do love the Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> well, what, tell me what song, what remake do you think? What cover is Blasphemy to you? I can only think of ones that I really like. I think, um, like I love Alien Ant Farms. Uh, 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 Annie, are you okay? What's the? It kind of makes me sad that my kids think Africa, it is by Weezer. Which, oh no, I, mean, I love that, Weezer. I don't like that version. <laughs> I do not like that version. What, the Toto Duran Duran song. No Toto. Uh, yeah, yeah, Toto. Oh, total. Right? God bless the rains down. In yeah, I think that's that's a that one I've got to stick with the original. But I do love one of my favorite covers, kind of the opposite of the question, is uh, Disturbed did Sound of Silence. Uh -huh. And again, it's another song that I like both ways. I love the original with that 70s, you know, that heart in it. And then I love Disturbed. His voice is so crystal clear. And just I just automatically think of the Trolls it. soundtrack. Yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. My old Hello. Friend. <laughs> um, it, what are you most proud of, David? And you can't say your kids or your marriage. I can't say my kids? No. no. Because we know that. We know you're most proud of your kids and your marriage. But what else? Yeah, I mean, my, my instinct is to say my family. Of course. Um, we'll just and you can't say Twisted given. Desire either because we know you're really proud of We that know too. you're really proud of Twisted Desire. Some of your best work, <laughs> let me just say. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to say something career oriented. You know, I mean, yeah. maybe longevity and you know, going from acting to writing, directing, podcasting, and staying, you know, reinventing myself. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. Yeah, but uh, but I, I will say my family. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Look, you can't get away from it. I no, it. we'll take it. Just brought, drawing him back. Um, if you could time travel, when and where would you go? I think I'd go to the 1920s. Oh, I love that. Um, because, I mean, you know, the Roaring Twenties, it was, uh, everyone was prosperous and partying. And uh, I would bring with me a Wall Street Journal from today and a <laughs> sports almanac. Oh, would, back to the future I would, over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Marty McFly, and I would uh, I would take advantage of it, and I would sidestep, you know, the 1929 crash and come back to the present. There you go. Sounds pretty good. That's a good answer. Uh, what was your childhood dream job? Well, like when I was really little, I yeah. was uh, way into sports. Um, football, basketball, then tennis. Really, like. When I was 14, if you asked me if I could do anything in the world, it would be, you know, a top 10 competitive tennis player. Like Andre Agassi. Was that oh, the dream? I mean, he was seriously, he was my hero. Have you read his biography, autobiography, no. by the way? It's amazing. You recommend that one? What about, did you do the audiobook or did you read it? N no, I don't do audiobooks. I read, but I read on my iPad. Okay. See, I, I've gotten really into, when I do biographies now, I love doing the auto, the audiobooks because- I love hearing the people read it. I don't know. I'm doing Viola Davis right now, and it's just fun to hear their voices sometimes. I got to try that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's what I Agassi's do when I'm driving. Look, you're amazing. in L.A. You know you know, you got a lot of time in the car. Throw on an audio book. Well, I listen to podcasts. Honestly, exactly. That's why, <laughs> that's why I got into this thing. I'm addicted to podcasts. So what podcast do you love? Oh, my gosh. Um, I listen to, I mean, Smartless I love. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love Pat McAfee for sports. Um, I listen to uh, Pete and Sebastian. Oh, I don't Sebastian know. Sebastian Maniscalco. Who is Sebastian it? Maniscalco is an amazing comedian. Uh, and he, he partners with a guy named uh, Pete Corielli. And they just kind of, it's just really just pure comedy. 
Um, oh, it's the movie yeah. with Robert De Niro, the about my father. It kind of feels like um, one of the the Meet the Parents movies. Oh yeah, but it's like he's going with his son to his in law's house for the first time, and he's like this kind of like is he is he Italian? I think he's Italian. And this movie's coming out. Yeah. And which one's in it? Sebastian. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Sebastian wrote it, and uh, De Niro plays his father, and he plays himself. Wow, it's, that's a lot. How do we? How the do we trailer's get that hilarious. Get? I can't wait to see it. <laughs> David, can you I mean, recreate that? That's incredible. <laughs> the podcast is really funny, though. Um, what's the best yeah. advice you've ever been given, David? I I tell my kids treat people how you want to be treated. You know, like just the mm -hmm. old cliche stuff. Mm -hmm. Always say please and thank you. Honestly, one of the best things that I've learned and I, I try and enforce with my kids is to be on time. Uh. Uh, it's it's a little, you know, you, you read these things about like w w what it takes to raise successful kids. And like the number one thing is making their bed. Oh, yeah. Like little things that you wouldn't think of. But when my kids are late, I'm I, I tell them there are, a hundred other kids that are on time yeah. and whatever you want in life, the kids who are on time, you're out, you're out. Mm -hmm. I that mean, makes, like Woody yeah. Allen said 90% of life is showing up, but like being on time is such an important thing that I, I feel like my kids just don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this generation likes to, well, uh, we have a lot of excuses for it. Yeah. We have but a lot of really, it just comes down to respect. How much do you respect yourself and other people? Well, that's so I always so Mark once pointed out to me, he goes, why do you think because I'm always 10 minutes late it, per kid. If I'm taking three kids with me, I'm 30 <laughs> minutes late. Kid. But um, <laughs> I say I say you get 10 minutes per kid. That's what you get. But, um, you know, now that they're bigger, there's no excuse. But he used to say to me when we first met, he's like, why do you think your time is worth any more than anyone else's? And I was like, I and I was like, good point. OK, I don't. And I tried to be better about it. But then someone pointed out to me, she's like. No, you're an eternal optimist. You always think like, I have three minutes. I can throw in that load of laundry or I can, you know, go brush the dog down. Or And then the next thing you know, you're seven minutes late because you try to do this, this and this because you had a few extra minutes. But then you hit traffic or the light was wrong. And, you know, next thing you know, you're you're late. So I, and how I, much stress does that cause? I know it's so, so much. Right? I hate I hate rushing. Jill is always rushing. I will remember this next time we go to dinner. I Don't will be, be on late. time. I will be early. <laughs> Okay. Um, what is a movie or show coming out soon that you're looking forward to? Coming out soon? Like Pink um, Ladies is one of mine, I think. I, Pink Ladies is coming out. The Grease really? musical. Really? Mm -hmm. I've not heard of this. Okay. They're doing a TV show of Grease? Pink Ladies. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's on Hulu. Oh, my God. Yeah. That will be really uh, cool. That I would be... That was my favorite movie growing up. Me I used too, to like slick my hair back and wear a leather jacket and pretend <laughs> I was Danny. I just don't know if I can handle a musical TV show. Like I wasn't into Glee and stuff like that. Oh, I, I can. I'm down for a musical. But Anytime. Grease, I love music. Like Grease, I love. So it's weird that like one of my favorite movies is a musical, but I don't think of it as a musical. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. What about you, David? Anything you're looking forward to? I, I'm really looking forward to this uh, last final season of Succession. Mm. Um I've gotten, well, you'll see if you watch the show, you kind of get, you know, attached to the characters, even though they're despicable. Um, Garbage people. I, I believe mean, that's called manipulated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's, it's, listen, the writing is so good that you are uh, attracted to watching characters that are horrible. Yes. And yeah. Titled and spoiled and like. For some reason, you still want to watch. Them. I don't. <laughs> it's like stopping for the car wreck, right? It's I like, will say the first episode of yeah. this new season is funny. Like they've done a good job injecting more humor. That's good. So far, Kieran Culkin is great. Oh, amazing! He's my favorite character I mean, in the whole. Show. Kieran's Every the uh, Harrison yeah. Ford of the show. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is something you wish people knew about you? Um. We're, we're really, these are real stumpers. This, this, I know. <laughs> these questions are tough. Well, listen, I, 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 I can't speak to like, you know, everybody, but I would hope that my friends, my close friends know how much they mean to me and how I would show up for them anytime, anywhere, and how much I love them. I, I recently lost two friends, uh, tragically, and just like, it just reminds you that. You know, tell 
I hope people know the people that I love. I hope they know how much I love them and how much they mean to me. Well, I can tell you, David, that I'm on the outside of that. And like, you know, I don't see you that often. We connect once in a while, but we still stay connected. And you always let me know how much you care about me. So I, I, I can tell you like sort of as an outsider that you do that. So you're successful with that. Oh, thank you. And you do the same for me. And I know it. <laughs> it's important. No, honestly, like at, at the end of the day, what else do you have? Let the people you that you love know how much they mean to you, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Well, do you want to do a this or that? This Amanda's or got a this or that. She's just going to ask you a few questions. Just it's going to be one or the other. <laughs> Pretty easy. All right. A little bit of this. A, a little, little bit, bit of, of that. that. That's right. Musical or I'm sorry. That's the next question. Original or reboot? Original. Musical theater or music concert? Concert. Josh or Harvey? <laughs> I'm by it. I can't say. I love I love Nate Riker so much. <laughs> Action or adventure? I'd say adventure. Super Bowl or World Series? Super Bowl. Hands down. <laughs> Carbs or sugar? Carbs. Aisle or window? Well, I'm always, I've always been an aisle guy, but my family keeps telling me the window with your pillow <laughs> is the way to go. But I, I don't like being inside. I don't like, I like the aisle. I but like also the being aisle. the parent, don't you feel like you always get stuck in the middle? Because I always get stuck in the, as much as I want the window, I get stuck in the middle. Well, you have three boys and a, a husband that's, you know, six, whatever. Gonna, They're all giant. You're the I, tiny one. I would. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't take the middle. My kids, uh, you know, Chelsea takes the middle, and she she she's not happy about it. I'll but. take the middle if I'm allowed to lay on whoever's on the window. Like that's my that's my deal. <laughs> I will tell you this. This is funny. I I I heart flew us to New York to do press at Jingle Ball for the uh, the launch of the podcast. And you know when you get flown first class, my my kids have never flown first class. <laughs> and Chelsea happened to have been there doing Jingle Ball with Jax. So uh, I gave her my first class seat and I was back in coach and she was so, so excited about it. And she texted me. She's like, do you want to come up and eat some of my meal? I'm, I'm eating like you know, this amazing meal with pasta and steak. And um, but normally Chelsea gets the middle, the small. It goes by size. Yeah, that's well. Yeah, we Mason was afraid of flying when he was young. So he started saying, I have to sit by the window. I have to sit by the window. And somehow that's become he has like perma window. Like he always gets the window seat now. No matter who else is flying, he gets the window seat. So even that's though just, now he flies the airplane. Even though now he's a pilot and he knows how to fly, he still I, somehow insane. convinces us that he has to sit near the window because now he now he has to look out the window and see all the other planes. Especially oh my that's goodness. like the reason. He has to see the airport, make sure everything's okay. So somehow he Research. just yeah, he just it's gets a permanent right. window seat, perma window. But um but uh well David, let me ask you this real quick. I just I just want to know. I'm now that my kids are older and your kids how old are your kids again? Um, Hannah is t was just 20. Um, Casey, my son, is uh, 17. He'll be 18 in May. And Chelsea's 13. Oh, my gosh. So you got almost – you're about to have two out of the house? Yeah. Wow. Casey is about wow. to go to college. Yeah. So we've got – so my oldest is 17, 15, and 10. So I want to ask your advice, though. They So my kids only – they – they have flown first class only when it's long haul, like international to Australia or something. But right. I'm thinking about now sticking them in coach. Like I feel like they're big enough that they can go to coach, and Mark and I can sit in first class. What do you think about that? <laughs> is that a is that like is that almost so like parental mean. abuse, <laughs> or is that my right? Like I worked for this, I paid for this. You're lucky you're coming that along. Right. I don't know. I don't know how. What do you I think? I kind of agree with you. I kind of agree with you. Uh, and I know a lot of families that do that. You do, um, and the kids aren't like. You know. Yeah, if you're doing a, a flight to Europe, that's you know first class seat is ten thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, the kids are lucky to be coming. Yeah, that's true. All right, good. All right, I've got David backing me up. So when my kids get mad at me, I'm gonna I'm gonna have them call you. <laughs> no, no, no! Don't tell them I said that. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Uh, I want to be nice, Uncle David. So the only uh, other thing we have to ask you, well, we're gonna ask you for a secret for our secret star later that we'll open in a later episode, and we usually don't know who those people are. No, we have are. no idea. We just guess and make random. Yeah. Yeah, we've we've had some doozies, but um, 
we have to ask you how many unread emails you have on your phone. And this is where we judge what kind of person you are. If you're an Amanda person or a me person. I know. Jill will, Jill will be so happy that you <laughs> asked this. You wouldn't believe it. I, I what, what, why don't you guess? You would never believe it. What's the most anyone's ever had? Well, Amanda here had what? What did okay, you have? Don't judge me. You had 81,000. What, what did you have? No, it was 110,000. Yeah. <gasps> yes. Yeah, okay, okay. So I'm he not, guessed. I'm not judging. <laughs> I'm not judging. I, I heard I have, it in your voice, David. <laughs> Uh, how uh, that must take up your entire memory yeah, that's like, but on it your phone. I mean, it's the cloud. It's just there. I don't even understand it. We get in fights about it every episode, David. I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, it's the cloud. It's just... All right. So what's yours at? Are you around 10,000? No, 2,647 unread emails. Okay, that's not too bad. That's I can really that's I, compared to Amanda's. I can get behind that. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I can't wait that to is, tell Jill because she she ridicules me about that. Oh no, I'm I'm at sixty eight, and that feels a little um that seems excessive for me right now. So I I, I understand Jill's um that that is on the verge of needing medication. That level of OCD. Me? Yeah, I think maybe it's called reading my emails every day. I read mine. <laughs> I just don't. What are you them at all. right now? Me? Yeah. Nineteen thousand nine hundred and twenty nine. <sighs> She's getting worse every week. We got to work. Listen, on, I thought we were working I, on this. But here, if I changed we're, my ways, we would have nothing to talk about each other. <laughs> we're procrastinators. That's yes. what that says. I like how you put the, yeah, I, the emphasis on pro. <laughs> that's exactly. Yes. We're pro procrastinators. Well, like I, I'm going to still get to them. <laughs> I have emails from 10 years ago, but I will get to them. All right. Well, David, we so appreciate you being here. This was so fun. Oh. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. And everybody go Thank check you out. Thank for having me. They can all check out your podcast. Tell them where they can find it. Uh, it's called Hey Dude, the 90s called. Uh, uh, it's an iHeart podcast, and you get it anywhere that you get your podcasts, Apple or Spotify, wherever. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming on and say hi to your beautiful family. I will. You too. Send my love to your whole family, okay? I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> 